In this video, we look at basic rendering in Creo 4. There are two approaches to rendering in Creo 4. Shading with reflections replaces Photo Render from previous releases, and Render Studio, powered by Keyshot, replaces Photo Lux from previous releases. We'll focus on the Shading with Reflections approach, which does not require a special license. The View tab contains the options we'll need to get the desired result. First, we'll enable the Shading with Reflections display style. I also recommend turning off the Spin Center, Annotation Display, and Datum Display. If you have Tall underscore Display set to Yes, I also recommend setting that to No. Next, we'll enable the Scene Background option. Notice the background is not visible yet. In Shading with Reflections mode, the background will only display when Perspective View is enabled. Change the scene from the Scene drop-down. In this case, we want to capture an image of the front and side of the chair with the windows and other chairs in the background. Spin the model first to view the desired angle, then open the Scene Editor to rotate the background. Notice spinning the model has rotated the model and the room slightly. We can easily fix this. Hold the control key, middle click your mouse, and move the mouse to the left or right. If you move the mouse up and down, you will instead change the eye distance setting of the perspective view. With the orientation set, adjust the intensity and saturation as needed. You can also change the height and zoom level to get the desired effect. There are options to toggle shadows and ground reflection. In case your model is not aligned with the floor plane, you can adjust it according to the model's default coordinate system. If your model is not aligned with the default coordinate system as desired, assemble it into a new assembly using datum planes to get the desired effect. This looks good, but if we want to change other perspective view settings, select Reorient from the Saved Orientations dropdown, and notice the effect of changing focal length with and without Maintain Field of View enabled. You can also adjust eye distance and image zoom as needed. Once the perspective view looks good, I highly recommend creating a saved orientation to quickly access it later. If you don't save the perspective settings and orientation, it can easily be lost if you accidentally exit perspective mode. Back in the scene editor, we'll review some light and shadow options. In shading with reflections mode, only one light can produce shadows at a time. Let's enable shadows for the distant light. Left click and drag the aim and or source location drag handles to get the desired effect. In some cases, it is easier to adjust the light position using the individual X, Y, and Z values. You can lock each light to the studio, model, or camera, and adjust the softness of the shadow if needed. This looks good, so we'll export an image. You can create a quick snapshot at the current window resolution, or export a PNG file to set size, DPI, and image depth. Using this method, you can create high-quality images of your Creo models.